Again, now the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is highly effective in preventing severe cases of COVID-19. This is the word from America's Food and Drug Administration. It's also found to have increased efficacy against the 501v2 strain of COVID-19. Now, Vitz University professor Helen Rees speaks to us about this. And Prof, good, good, very good morning to you. And of course, this is, this is good news that we're finding that the J&J &J vaccine is actually more effective than originally thought. It's very good news. Uh, and we're also finding that it... Uh, we found that already that it's effective against severe disease um, and moderate disease in the South African setting with the 501YV2 variant. So um, uh, the other reason why this is good news is that this is a single dose vaccine, which makes it much easier to administer. Okay. And it doesn't require the same level of, of cold chain, these ultra cold temperatures that, for example, the Pfizer vaccine requires. So all, all around, uh, this is very exciting. Mm. Well, Prof, I know that this is in essence our trial for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine when we had the president and the health minister get their first shot. Was it last week already? Uh, and, you know, how soon will, it, uh, will we be able to tell uh, whether those who've been given the vaccine since then were just that, that it is working, that, that it is uh, sort of making some inroads into here in, in SA in, in terms of prevention? So after you've had the vaccine, the immune system sort of sort of ramps up uh, over a number of days. So the best time to actually look at the effectiveness is about 28 days. This is a single dose vaccine, so 28 days after after that dose. Um, and then we'll be looking at things, particularly at hospitalization. We've got a good way of monitoring hospitalization uh, for COVID-19 patients in the country. And we'll be able to tie back hospitalization to people who've been vaccinated and people who haven't yeah. been vaccinated. Yeah. Um, the larger the numbers, and as we roll out and we get larger and larger numbers, we'll be able to do further breakdowns. So, for example, we'll be able to look at uh, people who are um, older, you know, o over the age of 60, uh, who are healthcare workers, but who are in an older age group, which we know is more vulnerable. So the more data we get, the more we'll be able to interpret it. But it, it's certainly looking... Uh, as a vaccine, a very mm. promising mm. vaccine in our setting. So at the moment, uh, uh, Professor, just a, a bit of information I read a short while ago saying we've vaccinated over 41,000 people so far. Considering it's been over a week or just over a week since we started this, should we, are we lagging behind in our sort of number of daily vaccinations? If we look at countries, you know, the, the likes of Indonesia, Chile, which would seem to be doing this uh, more rapidly and, and on a larger scale daily, should, should, should we be upping our game a little bit now? At the stage well this is just remember that, that this is that we've got a level of complexity here because this is what's called a 3b clinical trial so it's still being done as an open label rollout but in the context of mm, research mm, which sure. does add, add a level of complexity the second thing is if you look at most countries even the, the really rich countries such as the UK the US the getting everything right to begin with is a process also remember that we are slowly ramping up the, the number of hospitals, there'll be more major hospital centers opened uh, next week to deliver the vaccine. So we're around the country, we're slowly ramping up the numbers of centers. Um, and at the moment, we're doing this very much out of centers. So getting people shipped into centers, getting healthcare workers to come to these major centers. This is phase one. So we're learning how do we do this and we're rolling it out. It's got faster already, uh, despite the fact that, you know, we haven't opened all the centers around the country that, that will soon be opened. So I think once we see all of the, the major hospital centers opened, we'll see these numbers going up pretty rapidly. Um, and then once we get larger quantities of vaccines into the country, uh, we'll also then be expanding to mm. the next level of delivery sites. So going out into communities and into health districts for uh, a more uh, sort of a wider distribute, distribution mm. net, because then we're going to start pulling in people from the community, for example, older people over the age of 65. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I, 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 we all want to do it as quickly as possible, 100%. <laughs> um, and, and there's ongoing discussions and questions asked for every single facility that's rolling this out. But um, I think just a bit of patience. In a month's time, we're going to be seeing these numbers much, much higher.
And uh, I suppose then, Prof, we should also be encouraged by what we're seeing happening, you know, vaccine or no vaccine, with our numbers at the moment as well. Just looking at the last count, it's nearly 1,900 new COVID-19 cases. Considering where we were at the start of this year, when we were looking at sort of, you know, in, in 20, 20 some odd thousand at that time. So this goes back again, I suppose, to what the experts have told us. You know, a vaccine is not our answer, and we're seeing South Africans themselves, I suppose, bringing these numbers down as well. So that's very encouraging uh, in addition to us having now the vaccine that, 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 that like you say, we will be rolling out at, 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 a, at a better pace in the coming weeks. It is very encouraging. I and mean, when we saw that steep, steep second wave, which has mm. now really come down, we are, however, worried about the third wave. Mm. Um, you know, the, as the temperature gets colder and winter comes in um, and uh, as people become more relaxed and start to socialize, go out more, let down their guards, stop wearing their masks. We're worried that we are going to get this third wave. And so there's a bit of a race against time to try and get as many vaccines out as quickly as possible on the one hand, to, to try and sort of get a better level of population protection so that when the third wave comes and most people believe the third wave will come, uh, that we protected as many people as we possibly can at that stage. But it's up to us. I mean, I think we've said this so many times. Remember that this variant that we have is more transmissible. It's much easier to transmit from person to person. So wearing masks and distancing remains, you know, at the moment our most powerful tool mm. until we can get vaccination coverage really significantly raised. Mm. And just, just also looking at the latest news of uh, Moderna, that's the U.S. biotech firm now shipping doses of um, another COVID-19 vaccine here for, for testing, also believed to tackle. Uh, this particular variant that we are, uh, are battling here, Prof. I mean, you know, just, just sort of to, to sort of ease our minds a bit or any confusion at the moment, do we stick with, with Johnson & Johnson if I were to next in line to, to, to be next in line for a vaccine? Do I say no, but I don't want anything else. I only want Johnson & Johnson. How does it work? What's out there at the moment? What is, what is there to tackle this new variant? And, you know, in terms of preference and, and where, where we should be in terms of our mindset with the, with the variety that might come up in the next couple of months? So just to let everyone know that behind the scenes, um, the, the advisory committees and the scientific groups are working very hard to, to look at how the variant does interact with all the existing vaccines. Um, we do believe that the, that the vaccines won't be as effective against the variant, but uh, we, don't, we think that many of them will, will remain effective, if not as effective as, as, as the first strain that we had. So we're quite encouraged mm. by that, and we're very encouraged to see what's happening in other countries as they're rolling out these vaccines, that in fact they are proving to be highly effective, even in groups like the, the very elderly, over 80 years old, uh, that we hadn't previously uh, anticipated such a high level of efficacy. But we will be monitoring very closely when we roll out these vaccines to look at how effective are they in our setting. Um, but advice to everybody, uh, when your turn comes, take that vaccine. We're not going to allow vaccines to come in that uh, have not been approved by mm. SAPRA. Mm. Uh, we're going to be looking very carefully at the efficacy, including data on the interaction with our variant. And we're going to be looking closely at the safety. So when there is a vaccine on offer, you can be assured that it's been looked at not only by the drug regulator, but by policymakers and scientists and that we will only offer vaccines that have a level of effectiveness that's, that's acceptable and that are safe, that have a level of safety that's acceptable. All right, sound advice there from Professor Helen Rees. Thank you so much uh, for your time. If you've been wondering about where we stand with vaccinations, are we lagging behind? The professor saying there's a, there's a good reason for us uh, sort of just being a little more cautious around rolling this out and things are expected to ramp up a little bit.